All right. I'd like to call this meeting of the Plan Wheat Ridge Planning Commission for January 21st, 2016 to order. Uh, could I have a roll call of the members, please? Dirk Bowden. Present. Alan Bucknam. Present. Emery Dorsey. Present. Donna Kimsey. Here. Scott Ohm. Here. Steve Timms. Here. Amanda Weaver. Here. Thank you. If you could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is to approve the order of the agenda. Mr. Chair, I do move to approve the order agenda with one addition, this uh, City Wheat Ridge Res uh, Planning Commission Resolution Number 1, Series of 2016, designating public place for the posting of meeting notices required by Colorado Open Meetings Law, just under uh, uh, number eight other items. Very well, do we have a second? Second. Okay, uh, let's vote. Motion carried, seven to zero. Great, thank you. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for December 3rd, 2015. I move to approve the minutes for December 3rd, 2015. Second. All right, we have a first and a second, let's vote. Motion carried, seven to zero. Wonderful. All right, next up on the agenda is the public forum. This is a time for any person to speak on any subject not appearing on the agenda. Um, any of you here want to say anything about something not part of the hearing, feel free to. Okay, great. All right, we'll proceed to the public hearing. This is, uh, we have one case tonight, case number WZ-15-12. This is an application filed by Equinox Properties for approval of a zone change from residential one, that's R1, to mixed use commercial, that's MUC, for a property located at 3865 Kipling Street. Hi, Meredith. Hey, how are you? Good. is a request for approval of a zone change from R1 to mixed use commercial at 3865 Kipling Street. Um, I'd like to enter into the record the comprehensive plan, the zoning ordinance, case file and packet materials, and the contents of this digital presentation. So entered. Uh, let's see, all notification and posting requirements have been met. Therefore, the commission does have um, jurisdiction to hear this case. So again, this is an application for approval of a zone change from R1 to mixed use commercial. The zone change is the first step in the process for approval of development of the property under mixed use zoning. And if approved and prior to any construction, a site plan and plat would be required. Those are typically uh, administrative reviews without public hearings. And the purpose of the rezoning is to modify the list of permitted uses on the property and to simplify the review and approval for future development. So, um, this is a 2014 aerial taken to the property. North is to the top. Uh, West 38th Avenue runs here along the bottom with Kipling Street over towards the east. The property is outlined in sort of a turquoise. And you can see that it's at the northeast corner of 38th and Kipling. It is um, irregularly shapes shaped uh, is about 2.2 acres in size and it's got a couple of uh, vacant buildings on the northern portion of it presumably uh, as as farm buildings uh, single family residents and so on um, it does not include the piece at the hard corner of 38th and kipling um, this uh, piece is under separate ownership and currently has a gas station on it so um, you're probably aware that the R1 zone district is our largest single family zone, zone uh, residential zone. And um, it only allows single family and a list of um, other types of civic uses such as churches and schools and so on. 
Um, this is also a 2014 aerial, this time with a zoning overlay. Again, the property is outlined in turquoise. Uh, 38th Avenue runs along the south side. And then we've got Kipling further to the east. Um, there are a variety of land uses and zonings that are in this area, as you can tell from the, all the different colors on the zoning map. Each one of those colors represents a different zoning. Um, to the west is properties that zone plan commercial development, and it is used as a dental office that was built, I want to say, in the mid-2000s. Um, to the south, the red color stands for commercial one. And that is what we are calling now the Kipling Ridge uh, development. Um, this is an old photo, and since then the site has been redeveloped. It's got a new Starbucks, a Sprouts grocery store, and also the Morning Star Assisted Living Facility. On the other side of Kipling on the east, we've got more C1 zoning with a uh, gas station, some auto repair, and also um, sort of a, a retail strip mall. And then to the north, um, up in this area, uh, we've got both R1 and C1 zoning, and it encompasses the city of Wheat Ridge Rec Center. And I would note that uh, se uh, separating the rec center from the subject site is 39th, I thought it was 39th place, place, which is the access drive into the center, and then Lena Gulch, which is one of our um, major drainage ways in the city. So. Uh, taking a look at some photos of the site. Um, this is uh, looking north from 38th Avenue at the front edge of the property. Over here on the very left-hand side is the dental office, and then on the right side in the image is uh, the gas station on the corner. This is a better view of the dental office. This is looking east towards the, I guess it's a shell station. And um, this is looking east on 38th Avenue. The Kipling, uh, Kipling Ridge Center is located on the right-hand side. And you can see the streetscape and public improvements that were put in place with that. Um, now I'm standing on Kipling looking east, excuse me, west. Um, a couple of these outbuildings you can see over on the left-hand side of the image. Uh, looking northwest, you can see the green burn roof to the rec center. And then looking north along Kipling, and the property is to the left-hand side in that image. So, let's see, moving on. So, again, the applicant is requesting the property rezoned to mixed-use commercial. Um, this is a zone district that we generally see along major commercial corridors and at community centers and employment activity centers. And the intent behind the mixed-use zoning is to encourage uh, medium to high-density mixed-use development and in addition to retail, uh, excuse me, residential and civic uses that are currently allowed on the property, those uses are allowed in the MUC zoning as well in addition uh, to a wide range of commercial and retail uses. And, and again, the purpose of the mixed use zoning is to create a flexible approach to land use. It's looking really more at um, design rather than use and compatibility with adjacent structures. Um, it's intended to promote a mix of land uses, be more in, urban in character and more pedestrian friendly. Um, our mixed use zoning has been very popular because it's actually a more predictable land use process for an applicant rather than going through a big long uh, plan development process. So, um, and um, this uh, particular uh, application does, have, does not have a specific development scenario at this time. So as I indicated previously, um, the, really the, the zoning on the property R1 is very limited. The only thing that it allows are single family residential uses as well as public uses. And I put together a little chart that showed what's allowed under R1, what's allowed under the MUC zoning. Um, as far as uses goes, not only are residential and commercial uses allowed, there are you know, a full range of office service, retail, and restaurant. Um, there is some availability to drive-through uses if they can meet certain criteria. Um, on the, under the R1 zoning, there are no architectural standards, and um, in the mixed-use zoning, we have written in de development standards um, into the actual zone district itself related to articulation, variation, materials, and transparencies. Maximum building height in the R1 is 35 feet, 
and in this particular zone district it was not part of the area that was excluded um, from density and height standards and so in this particular on this particular property any use or any building that would have a residential use within it would be 35 feet and any commercial structure would be 50 feet and so on so if the rezoning is approved the applicant would then submit for an administrative review and a subdivision application both of those would be administrative and the design of the property would be held to the standards um, not only in the mixed use zoning but also in the architectural and site design manual as far as process goes there was a neighborhood meeting on, on december 15th Teeth. there was one attendee present and the gentleman that was uh, there was supportive of the rezoning and reinvestment uh, we went out on our standard 15-day referral to all of the service agencies with no concerns expressed from city of departments or agent or other agencies um, once we get a site plan application in we would be going through an additional refer referral process for both the site plan and the subdivision um, assuming we're moving forward with this application, the next step would be a city council public hearing on March 14th, and then a special develop or a specific development plan, possibly a plat, and then to building permit. So, um, as the commission is aware, we have um, criteria uh, detailed and included in the zoning and development code that we use uh, for evaluating a zone change request. Um, the criteria relate to things like impacts on the area, whether utilities can serve it, and so forth. I think the two most important in my mind are probably consistency with the comprehensive plan and a change in the character of the area. Um, Envision Wheat Ridge, which this is a little, um, uh, a little screenshot that I took of the area uh, from the uh, structure map in the comprehensive plan. Um, I identifies Kipling as a primary commercial corridor and is high on the city's list of redevelopment priorities. And while we've got a recreation focus a little bit further to the north where we've got the rec center and you know, some of the, the trails along Clear Creek and Lena Gulch, um, this southern portion uh, closer to the inter intersection is appropriate for higher de intensity uses, taller buildings and higher densities. Um, the community commercial center designation, which is the, the round circle, is an area of focus with the goal of ensuring these areas remain economically strong and um, serve community needs related to the city's fiscal health and social well-being. And additional goals uh, met in the comprehensive plan include uh, redevelopment of and reinvestment of underutilized commercial areas with long-term infill with denser high quality development with regard to the change in character of the area uh, Kipling is a state highway it's designated as primary commercial corridor in the comp plan and it carries over 41,000 vehicles per day which makes it um, probably pretty undesirable for low density residential use. Uh, we're continuing to see development on the Kipling corridor intensifies uh, with new de development and reinvestment in tired old commercial centers like the Kipling Ridge development right to the south. Um, this area is undergoing change and we believe that this uh, rezoning will provide additional options for it to be redeveloped as it moves forward and it could act as a catalyst for additional redevelopment and reinvestment in the area so with that um, staff has concluded the following um, we've concluded that the proposed uh, zone change will promote the public health safety and welfare we've concluded that the request is consistent with the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan and that the zone change will prepare it for, for the property for redevelopment and maybe a catalyst for other improvements or investments in the area and finally uh, the criteria used to evaluate a zone change support the request we are giving a recommendation of approval with uh, no conditions and that concludes staff comments great thanks Meredith all right um, any commission questions for staff let's start over here with Scott thank you for that presentation um, I just have two questions is any portion of the property in the floodplain it is not um, Lena Gulch as it is adjacent to the property was channelized as part of the improvements we did back in the late 80s early 90s 
And then the other one is uh, just kind of more out of curiosity. There's a funny little jog on the north side. Was that at some point like envisioned as a road or something to continue 39th? Um, um, it was um, when we originally were platting the rec center at one point we had thought that it would be a potential for access point, um, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense anymore. The rec center is so heavily used that we have concluded that it probably isn't appropriate or, or very functional to commingle commercial traffic with the rec center traffic. Okay, thank you, that's all I have. Okay, Mr. Timms. Just one question for staff. In the staff report in your presentation, you referenced that the applicant doesn't have any scenarios at this time. In the neighborhood meeting notes from December 15th, there are actually two proposals or two scenarios in that? So, so um, I, th I think when, I wasn't at the meeting, but I think when Zach prepared the notes, when uh, we typically go from a pre-application meeting with an applicant to a neighborhood meeting, I think he pulled a lot of that from the original um, pre-application notes. And so um, we looked at a couple options with them sort of back in the day. I don't know if either of those are moving forward and we're just looking at the zone change as a freestanding action itself. Okay. I'll follow up with them. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Kim Z. I don't have any questions. All right. Mr. Dorsey? No questions here. Ms. Weaver? Um, I, don't know, I don't know if this is appropriate at this meeting, but what, what's the regulation on, is there, there is a sidewalk there, yes, but it's adjacent to the street on the west side of Kipling? Of Kipling? Yes. And so, so when, when and if it's redeveloped, will they have to do a setback? Yes. Well, they will um, have to sides? be. They will be responsible for building sidewalks on both uh, separated sidewalks like with the with the tree tree lawn, um, both along 38th Avenue and the Kipling frontage. Okay. Can I can I ask a further question regarding sure. that? Um, would this be a situation since? the rest of 38th and Kipling does not uh, do that, would they potentially be able to do the give money and not do it on their property, but give money towards having it done? Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're, what you're talking about is um, providing an escrow for future yeah. development. My, my, just, my concern generally is that there is so much pedestrian traffic on both these streets and there just is not adequate pedestrian access which is not a issue of this i just kind of with thinking about envision wheat ridge and all of the other things what's the plan for really making it pedestrian friendly right well generally the, the policy on especially uh, corridors that are so heavily traveled uh, would be to get the improvements built okay and then hopefully fill in the, the links as okay. we go along. Okay. Um, you're probably aware that we just um, are in the process of completing the path along the east side of Kipling, right. which is 10 feet wide with the tree lawn. Right. Probably wouldn't be as wide on this side, okay. but um, definitely trying to accommodate the pedestrians. Okay. Yeah. So an effort would be made to continue that yes. whole thing from, cool. Thank you. Mr. Bowden. Um, my questions involve the, uh, the scenarios outlined at the neighborhood meeting, so maybe I'll have the applicants come uh, justify or, or talk about that before I ask something that doesn't right. That exist. Right, and um, I know Erica had brought that to, up to me when she got the packet because, like I say, this is the intent of the zoning is that there is not any specific development scenarios. We tossed around a couple ideas of what might work on the property. Also, I think included in that was some discussion of trying to include the gas station, but um, you know that's that's probably a little bit pie in the sky. Okay. No questions. Then. Right. I just had a couple of questions, Meredith. Sure. Um, <clears throat> uh, when we talk about the uses on MUC zoning um, with uh, conditional use 
for drive throughs if mandatory separation from adjacent drive throughs can be met. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious, what are, do you know offhand, or remember offhand what that mandatory separation requirement is? It's 500 feet. 500 feet, okay. Um, the Starbucks is definitely within that 500 foot separation. There's not really a variance mm -hmm. um, that can be applied for. Yeah. They can, if they do a true mix of uses, say a residential component and a commercial component, then they don't have to meet that separation. So like a, a, like a, like a drive-through bank kiosk would be allowed if there was, say, second-story residential above a commercial Some something. Some scenario like that. Okay. Um, I was just curious, too, uh, you know, thinking about the gas station here. Do gas stations with self-serve kiosks count as a drive-through uh, as far as the, yes. the code? Okay. Would that also apply to um, automatic car washes? Yes. Okay. So anything basically where a car can pull in, get a service, and pull out counts as drive-through. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. The other question, uh, the other just point of clarification I wanted to make is uh, that zoning map you had in Exhibit Three. There's a little, uh, little tiny chunk of R1 zoning on um, in that southwest corner that kind of um, steps out from the rest of it. Uh, no, actually, f way over to the right, yeah, or left, yeah. I believe, did, didn't we address that in a case recently? We did. And um, yeah, this, so this is has not been updated, but this piece of property mm -hmm. right here is currently a single family home. Um, it was rezoned from R1 to MUN, geez, about six months ago. Mm -hmm. And then this is a little duplex property zoned R2. We were hoping those would be combined, but it, um, it that did not happen. So I guess a follow-on question to that would be if if we if we approved a MUN zone uh, change for that little parcel, uh, why the differentiation between that and 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 the MUC request here? Close, closer to Kipling. Closer to Kipling. Okay. So it's not a size. Is it a size uh, aspect too, or is it just the proximity to Kipling? It's the proximity to the intersection. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, does anyone else have any follow-on questions to Scott? Yes. Yeah, on that same map, um, just out of curiosity, so what happens if that if this gets rezoned to mixed use commercial um, on 38th and Kipling? There's going to be a from the subject property to the center line of the road. That's going to be residential one. No, um, typically the the zone district goes to the center line of the. Okay. Street. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other follow-on questions for Meredith? Okay. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Um, so, uh, now what we usually do is if the applicant would like to come and add anything to that or make any clarifications or say anything, you're welcome to come up. Just state your name and your address for us, uh, make a statement, and then uh, if, if uh, we could have the opportunity to ask some questions, that would be great. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Erica Shorter, and I'm representing... Can you, can you bring the mic up just for the folks at home? Thanks. Uh, I'm uh, Erica Shorter, and I'm re representing Equinox Properties. Um, my address is uh, 1873 South Bel Air Street, Denver, Colorado. Um, and, um, you know, Equinox just purchased this property in October. And so the reason I wanted to just clarify, um, I also work for Evergreen Development, which is also a retail development company. And we were under contract for a long period of time and working with a user and had gone through several site plan iterations and um, the user went away and we had an investor come and purchase the property and so we've kind of just decided to step back and start over and thought the best plan of attack would be to uh, rezone to the MUC and then and then start really working with users and talking with different prospective users so that's kind of the confusion with the the notes I think some were copied from the first pre-app meeting that we had a while ago so that's the confusion there so, but I'm happy to answer any other questions that you might have. Okay, uh, Mr. Bowden, do you have questions for the applicant? Um, so there haven't been any kind of negotiations with the shell or, or talks about? Yeah, we, we've talked with them. Um, we've had some initial conversations with them, um, but we have not come to an agreement on any terms. Um, so it could be one direction that we head in the future, but at this point we don't have anything solidified with them. Amanda, questions? Mr. Dorsey, Donna, Steve. So with, with no scenario in place, does that also mean then that no access permit from CDOT 
is then technically applicable as of today? Uh, well, when we, when we were under contract um, with Evergreen before Equinox purchased the property, we did submit an application with CDOT. We did get a, um, an access permit for a right in right out off Kipling. So we do still have that. Okay, thank you. Scott, nothing, okay. I don't think I've got any questions for you either, so thanks for uh, clarifying that stuff. All right, uh, now's the time for anyone else uh, who would like to ask questions of the commission that we can then address to the applicant or the staff. Has it been anything? Okay, either of you guys? Okay. All right, well, I'll close this part of the public hearing then, and um, we'll discuss, entertain motions and whatnot. I'd like to make a motion. I move to recommend approval of case number WZ-15-12, a request for approval of a zone change from residential 1R1 to mixed use commercial for property located at 3865 Kipling Street for the following reasons. Number one, the proposed zone change will promote the public health, safety, and welfare of the community. Number two, the proposed zone change is con consistent with the goals and objectives of the city's comprehensive plan. Number three, the zone change will prepare the property for redevelopment and may serve as a catalyst for other property development or improvements in the area. Number four, the criteria used to evaluate a zone change support the, the request. I'll second that motion. Um, any discussion, commissioners? All right, I'll ask for a vote then, please. Motion carried, seven to zero. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks for coming down. Meredith, thanks for your work on that, too. All right. Uh, now we'll move on to our other item. Uh, this is uh, City of Wheat Ridge Resolution, or Planning Commission Resolution Number 1 for 2016. Uh, this is a resolution establishing a designated public place for the posting of meeting notices as required by the Colorado Open Meetings Law. Um, Meredith, do you want to talk about this or should I just go through it? Um, yeah, there's, there's not much to add. Um, th this is a statutory requirement that we do this once a year and um, it's pretty typical that we um, ch uh, ch use the lobby, the lobby um, posting area and um, you know, we, we do that for Housing Authority Planning Commission Board of Adjustments. So we would just need a motion from you. Um, in addition to the public posting, we also... Okay. Is there any any change on this uh, resolution uh, compared to last year's resolution? I don't believe it, is. it. It seems extremely similar to me, but okay. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I think you kind of covered everything here. Um, commissioners, any discussion on this? Comments about? Okay. I support it. You support it. All right. I support it too. Okay. Open meetings are good meetings. That's my motto. Um, all right. Well, then I'll ask for a, uh, a motion to approve this resolution then. Mr. Chair, I move to approve resolution number one, series of 2016, a resolution establishing a designated public place for the posting of meeting notices as required by the Colorado Open Meetings Law. I would second that. All right. Unless there's any further discussion, I'll ask for a vote. Motion carried, seven to zero. Okay, great. So for anyone at home who missed that, you can find our uh, posted uh, postings of meetings here in City Hall in the Weirds transcript or online on the city website. Uh, and we'll do that for a whole nother year and then we'll do this resolution again. And I imagine it'll be very similar. Uh, okay, uh, any other business? Just briefly, we've got three of you who, oops, whose terms are coming um, to the end. That would be Alan, uh, Scott, and Emery. Um, they expire on March 2nd, 2016. So if you feel like 
this has been a great learning experience for you and you'd like to continue to serve the city of Wheat Ridge on the Planning Commission, you will need to reapply through the city clerk's office. Um, once we uh, do that, and hopefully, you know, we still have one opening from District 4. Um, the second meeting in March, we'll vote for a new chairman and vice chair. So a couple things to keep in mind there. A new chair already? I know. Man, I feel like... Yeah, you just... Gee, well, that's, that's okay. Yeah, I got a notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or just yeah, take it up to the city clerk. She'll take it. So, any questions or comments on that? And then the final thing is, you see that we are um, trying to promote uh, sustainability. We've moved to a new packet system. So, appreciate everybody's cooperation in that. Uh, we think it makes sense and. Uh, uh, I think last Friday, was it last Friday, the packets got delivered in a snowstorm? Maybe that was two weeks, two weeks ago. And so these will be a little bit more uh, durable as well. So. Oh, good. Magazines and such, sometimes, I don't know if you're in the middle of the envelope, they have to go out and have a special order for some of that because they really get thick. I just, I just, I'd like to make one request, and that's uh, that you add a, a handcuff to a uh, lock on there, so I <laughs> carry it. So I look like a real official courier, and I look like a real dangerous guy. Alan, that just makes you look like a spy. Uh, I know that's exactly <laughs> what I have. That's what this look I'm going for. All right, uh, great. Yeah, I, I like that, that stuff too. It's, it's, a, it's a nice, sustainable addition to the uh, process. So, all right. Well, unless there's anything else. Uh, we can adjourn if somebody wants to move that. I move to adjourn. Okay. I'll second that. Let's go. All right. Let's vote. Motion carried. Seven to zero. All right. Thanks, everybody.